Hello friends, you are watching data structures using C. All the videos are brought to you by Angpro Training from Angpro Technologies. Hello friends, this is the third video in the series called Q. So today we are going to discuss the different types of Q. If you are new to this video, please go and watch our previous videos uh, in the same playlist. Uh, today we are going to discuss the different types uh, present in Q. In the earlier video we have already discussed and learned uh, the simple Q, linear Q. So which is already one of the types of Q and today we are going to discuss the circular Q uh, which is the second type in Q. And there is one more Q called double-ended Q or in short DQ. Remember the spelling in DQ, D E Q U E, and the spelling of the DQ operation, which is D E Q U E Q U E, right? So here DQ stands for double ended Q, and the last type is priority Q, right? So these are the major uh, types of Qs. So then, what is a circular Q? Circular Q is also a linear data structure and it is also a type of Q. It follows FIFO principle uh, as we did in the normal linear Q in which the last node is connected back to the first node to make a circle. Let us imagine this as the circular Q uh, which has seven locations so that we can store seven elements into this Q. This end is called uh, the front end where we can delete the elements and the rear end where we can insert the elements, right? So this end is connected back to this end, right? So rear end, the last location or the last node is connected again back to the first location. If you see this diagrammatically, so this will be the uh, status of the circular queue. In circular queue, if we reach the end of in circular queue, if we reach the end for inserting elements to it, it is possible to insert new elements if the slots at the beginning of the circular queue are empty. Right? So this is the zeroth location, I mean the first index which has 23, uh, this is called the front end. And the first location we have 12, in the second location 45, third 23, fourth index 47. Right in the fifth index, we have 50 and 6 and 7 indexes are null. I mean, uh, they have not initialized. So, let us NQ, uh, let us do the NQ operation on the circular queue. So, this is the basic uh, circular queue currently, it is empty, which has six locations 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and both the front and rear pointers are pointing to the same location which is 0. So now front equals to 0 and rear equals to 0, max is 6. Uh, the maximum number of elements that we can store in this circular queue is 6 and let us take a variable count as 0 which will increment after every n queue. Right? Currently this and the circular queue is empty. If we done NQ operation, let us say I've inserted the 11 into the first location, the rare points to the next location to accommodate the next incoming element. Now count is 1, rare will be incremented to 1. So how we do that? Rare plus 1, we will add 1 location and we, do, and we do the modulus operation with 6 which gives you 1. Right? I'll tell you why we are doing this modulus operation because every time we are going to iterate through this circular queue. Once we're done uh, by filling the elements until 5, so we'll go back to 0th location if, the, if, that is, uh, if that is empty and we'll start dividing the rare pointer by 6 and we'll get the remainder as the count. Right? It has to restart its location, right? So that is why we are dividing the rare by 6 and getting the reminder. So this operator normally gives you the remainder after division. Now rare is 1, count is also 1 because we have inserted the element 11 in the first location that is 0th index. So when we insert uh, 22, 33, 44 and 55 the status will be uh, like this. 
uh, rare is now pointing to the fifth location count is 5 because we have inserted 5 more elements I mean total count is 5 we have inserted 4 more elements to the existing queue and the current status is this yeah front end is still pointing to the first location and the rare pointer is pointing to the last location which is the sixth location I mean the fifth index so still we have got one place empty now let me delete an element so I have deleted Lavin so I should delete from the front end so Lavin has been deleted and the front pointer is moved to first location so I incremented the front pointer uh, in this way same with the rare and now it is pointing to 1 rare is still 5 I've decremented the count because I've just got 4 elements right so if I delete 22 uh, the front is currently pointing to the third location which is the second index so if I input, if I NQ66 in the fifth index, the status of the uh, circular queue is this. So rare is pointing to zeroth index. That is why we have divided rare plus one uh, by six. Rare is uh, before the input of 66, rare was five. Five plus six, five plus one is six. Six mod six gives me zero. So which is correct here because rare is pointing to the 0th index after 5 rare is uh, pointing back to the first location here in this context 0th index right to get the 0th back we are dividing rare plus 1 by 6 to get the remainder now front is still pointing the location uh, 33 which has got 33 right so if I NQ 77 and 88 so the current status of the circular queue is this front and rear both are pointing to the same location that is second index so count is 6 now the circular queue is full we cannot insert any elements more if we want to insert the elements I have to delete some elements from the queue where the uh, where the front pointer is pointing to right so let us study the program C program to implement the circular queue using array so this is the program uh, we have defined the insert circular queue function which insert the element into the circular queue delete circular queue and display circular queue and menu which is uh, which is for taking the input from the user for an appropriate operation and main will execute all the functions right okay so we have defined a global variable I mean we have defined a constant called max which has got the value 6 now max is 6 wherever we have max this will be replaced by 6 so CQ, front, rear and count are the four global variables which are initialized. CQ is an array which has got the six uh, in it. So CQ will be our circular queue which has got six. So CQ of max will be our circular queue. So front is a variable uh, which stores the location of the front end. Rear is a variable which stores the location of rear end and count will be incremented whenever we input the elements so count is the total number of elements in the circular queue so all front rear and count have initialized their values with zero right so let us start from main function so here we have used the switch case uh, case one is for insert circular queue if you want to if you want to insert the elements in circular queue go to case one so take the number one from the menu right how we are getting one two three four from the menu function let's go and read the menu function what is there in menu function here we have a list of printf statements telling enter your choice if I enter one that will be stored in CH and that CH is brought to this switch statement switch of CH so switch of one so this code will be executed insert CQ if I enter 2 that will be for deletion operation 3 for display 4 for quit say suppose I have inputted 1 
So case one is matched insert CQ. There is a function call for insert circular queue operation. So this will be executed. Let's go and check this insert circular queue. Right. So first we are checking whether the queue is full or not with this if statement. If count equals to max, max is six. Count will be incremented after every uh, after every input of the element. So count uh, represents the total number of elements in the circular queue. If that is equal to max, obviously circular queue is full. Else, that means if count is not equals to max, we'll tell the user to enter the data and that data will be stored in CQ of rare. So what is the, uh, what is the value of rare? So in the first iteration, I mean in the first input, the rare has zero in it, right? So CQ of rare will represent the first location in the array. So data will be stored in CQ of zero. That is the first location of the CQ, circular queue. And I'll increment the rare with one and I divide it by max. So that means we are going to divide it by six, which stores, which returns the remainder and stores it in rare. So zero plus one is one. One mod six gives you one again. So rare will contain one after this execution and will increment the count to update the total number of elements. Data inserted in the circular queue. Okay, so now go and check the delete operation. So here is the delete operation. So this will be executed when a uh, menu will return delete when will it will return two right if it returns two so d delete cq operation will be executed right let us go and check that delete cq if count equals to zero then obviously there are no elements in the circular queue else we will increment the front uh, so that we are making the front to not point to the current location. If front is incremented, it will point to the next location so that we are assuming the current element has been deleted, which is CQ of front, right? And we'll decrease the count so that count will have one element less. So that is the indication of element deleted, right? So, so let us go and display CQ circular queue display function will you will work for that if count equals to zero there are no elements to display else we are using the for loop if i equals to front and j not equals to zero until j remains not equals to zero we are iterating from the front end to the rear end until j remains zero because j is the total number of elements here right so this is the count so i i should only display i can only display the maximum of the elements which are stored in count right so i'll start with i i will get the value from front variable uh, which is the index of the first element so i'll start displaying the elements from the front location so front will return its index to i cq of i will be the output and i'll increment i plus 1 so by doing this, I'll iterate through the array to the circular queue. If I input four, that will be the return. So, so you should not enter four un unless you don't want to exit from the program, right? So this is an infinite while loop because we have declared here one, right? So while one, because we have here one, which is true while it is true so this will always be true so this will execute forever uh, unless the input is 4 right I hope you understood this program please take this program down on your book and try this more and more times I'll show this from the beginning please pause the video and try this program so write this program line by line pause the video and start writing the program So okay, let us run this program and check for the operations. Let's type control F9. So here is the menu, one insert, two delete, three display, right? I'll insert the element, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So let us display, 
elements in QR 567. Okay, let's input three more elements. Eight. Nine. And now I'll input 10. Right. So display 567, 8, 9, 10. Now the elements, all elements are filled up if I go and try to insert one circular cube is full so that means I had to remove an element to insert the element right so let's go and remove let's say two deleted element from the circular cube is five which is the first element right so let's go and display it six seven eight nine ten so so the element five has been deleted let's go and add an element let us say 99 Okay, so display 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 